Uh, okay, delighted to say I've been joined by Steve Evans this afternoon to celebrate one year in charge. Steve, looking back, how's it gone? I think if you were saying how's it gone, it's, it's gone well. Frustrating in periods for different reasons. Um, currently so frustrated like every other football person, none more so than our supporters. Um, I'm waiting for a decision this week, but you know, you always look back in, eight, in six months and a year's time and you think, did I make the right decision in, in joining Gillingham when I had three or four other options, one out of the country and a, two or three in the EFL? And I think I did. I believe I did. Um, I have an outstanding relationship with the board, with our chairman and chief executive. Um, you know, and for a one hit at recruitment, really, we didn't get much of an opportunity in January, but one hit at recruitment then. You know, we, we believe we, if the season restarts this week on, or we get the go-ahead to start at the back end of this week, Henry, we'll, we'll very go for the playoffs. Um, and to do that in one small summer window is, is brilliant and credit to the players. Looking back, obviously, you would have done homework before you came in. Has it been as you expected in terms of behind the scenes, a setup, or has it been harder? What, what have you made of it? Um, I think there's a number of summaries. I think I had a... Um, I think the chairman, before I came in, got... Um, a lot of bad crack from people and I think it was because they attacked them as managers and sometimes that can be expected I've been attacked myself on a couple of occasions so it's it's always difficult to take but it's interesting isn't it that of the, the chairman who's moved me on I still have wonderful relationships with I still have a brilliant relationship with Darren McCantony and the, the board with Peterborough mm. I still have a wonderful wonderful relationship with uh, Massimo Cellino in fact he offered me to go to Italy when he I took over a club over there um, and a wonderful relationship with Tony Stewart. Every, every chairman I've worked for, the Radford family I was speaking to in the week at Mansfield Town. So it's interesting then when you when you ask people and you get that type of feedback. I've, I've found Paul Scully, to be honest, to be very genuine, to be hard some days, to be hard at times. Doesn't always give you the decisions you want as a manager, especially when it comes to recruitment. But he's always put joining a football club first, and, and that'll never change, and neither it should change, given the longest serving chairman in the football league. And I've seen in the last two weeks how he is respected by his peers, who have been on the phone to him. I've spent some time with the chairman, keeping a distance, of course, four hours with him yesterday, and a, a lot of big decisions to be made yesterday. Um, but four hours, and his phone is going every 20 minutes with different people, different chairmen. So, I'll see it for myself. So, brilliantly supported by everyone at the football club. The town of Gillingham. You know, I'm in St Mary's, you know, most of the week, as you know. Yeah, of course, sometimes when we have a beer. Um, but, yeah, I'm, listen, I've, I've loved every minute of it. But there's, there's, we've not touched the surface, to be fair. You mentioned recruitment. Which that's a huge part. How would you assess the recruitment you did last summer? I mean, looking back, obviously, with the, the time that's passed, is it, are you happy with it? I know it's always hard to get. You're never going to get 10 out of 10, but... How would you say that went? Yeah, I think the bulk of it delivered, to be fair. I think your movement in the loan market was outstanding with the likes of Jones in a corner. Holly Lee played a wonderful part from January. Jordan Roberts, the same. Jordan Gray, a bit later on them, but the same. So I think that was all good. Um, young Mika and Jolie and Ali Shakubiak played a part in the early part of the season. So you look at the loans, very good. Um, you look at the permanence, there's been a couple of frustrations. Matty Willett, we've been injured more than he's been available. That's been a frustration because he is he is one, if not the best players on League One. So um, I would say the recruitment from from where we were, and that's how you have to judge it, from where we were, is has been good. But we, like everyone else, we, we need to get better. And, you know, we had a review with the chairman yesterday and people are all looking at numbers around them now. We've we have operated with the smallest budget in League One. People probably got fed up with me saying it at times, but um, why I say it sometimes is to give credit to the playing staff, credit to the coaching staff, and credit to a chairman who doesn't jeopardise the football club. And there is players out there in the market that I like, that we spoke to, that would have signed, but we couldn't do the numbers. So I would say the recruitment's been good, but we always challenge and strive but to make that better because we've got some serious competition if we start football again this season. And if we don't, we'll, we'll have even as a fierce competition next season if we don't, because it's fairly obvious now that if we don't, 
the likes of Sunderland, the likes of Peterborough, the likes of Ipswich, and we're going to be joined depending what happens in the championship. There's, there's certainly two very strong teams coming down and, and perhaps even local rivals, Charlton. So it's, it's going to get tougher as we go forward. It seems to me, kind of looking in, that a lot of the players you've signed, yes, they're good players, but they also seem good people as well. Would you say that's been a big part of the success you've had, especially over the second half of the season, having a good changing room? Yeah, I think it's, I think experience, the more experience you get as a manager, um, and, and the best tell you this, the best, the courses that I still frequent. You know, I was on a call last week with Brendan Rodgers and he's still talking about how essential it is that you get the right players. And it's not just about ability. That's that's the number one fact. Without the ability that you're looking for, you wouldn't be signing them. But more and more now, managers are, are, are trying to do, through them and the staff, as many background checks as possible. Not about, I should have to phone anyone in League One, another manager or championship, and ask if a player can play. If I'm doing that, I've got, I've got problems. I'm not going to do a good job. But what I can do is phone them, ask them about their character, ask them about their functionality, attention to detail, willingness to work hard every day of the week that they come in, or willing to buy into the project. And um, and that's what you're checking these days. So I think I think we've got a lot of that right. We've we've had the odd misdemeanor within the camp, but we've got 18, 19 senior professionals. So you're going to have it. But on the whole, led by our skipper Max Amer, the dressing room has been first class. At the start of the season, obviously we had a few really frustrating results, whether it be a, a away at Tranmere or at home to Blackpool. What do you think the difference was between results then when we maybe were losing out when we should have been winning and then the back end of the season when we were improving and getting results, maybe sneaking a result here and there or whatever? What was the difference, do you think? Yeah, good question. I, I think for me, I think just confidence, confidence of the players, finding to something completely different from what they'd been used to, certainly the lads that had been there before. It's an entirely new group, you know, four or five of the, of the boys. You know, if you look at young Jack Tucker was was on a list of players that the chairman presented me with to be released. And uh, he's played a huge part. Um, I would think confidence, I think ability with, within the group grows, understanding of each other, game plan grows, uh, understanding on the training ground grows. If, if you look at Conor Ogilvy, you know, I watched the kid at left back last season before I come in. So he, so he, it wasn't very good what I watched, but we worked, we done a lot of work with him on the training ground. He was back to the project at Spurs that the people at Tottenham Hotspur thought had a chance, a real chance. And I'm sure he'll play at a very high level and if he just retains a little bit more patience. And it seems that over Christmas as well, you're basically sticking with the same 11, same squad as it was. I only made a small squad anyway. But how important was that consistency and continuity in the team, knowing that kind of they were playing well, so they're going to keep their shirt? I think as a, as a manager, or as, a, or as a head coach, as I've been at a couple of clubs, you you have to. If, you, if your players are buying into your plan, you tell them if they do well, and the team does well, then they, you've got not a lot to think about as a manager because you should be keeping the shut. And we didn't have the options of a a giant like a Sunderland, like Kenny down at Portsmouth. You know, I could keep going. You know, up at Fleetwood, we we joined us. Peter brother, the squad is fantastic. We didn't have those options. So when we did change it and we brought people in, we brought it in with the fact that we thought they could make a real difference at the time. But as you said, we played the whole Christmas campaign with no changes to the start of the living. And that's credit to every one of them. And the straightening as it is for the others, the results were positive in the men. What would you say has been the standout performance of the season for you? I mean, we've obviously had that long unbeaten run. Was it in there somewhere? I know the Doncaster game at home in the cup was something that really pleased you, wasn't it? Yeah, because I think Doncaster's a really good side. I think Darren Moore went in there and put his own stamp on it from taking over from Grant McCann. Two good managers. It's different styles, different characters, different ways. Um, we went up there, as you know, on the opening day and we got 1-1. Perhaps could have been 2-0 ahead at half time, but happily settled for a point in the end as they upped the game. And I think when we uh, we drew them in the cup, I know young, their best players for me is a man called Ben Whiteman, who, of course, was a kid at Sheffield United and I took to Mansfield and he blossomed and did that well that Darren Ferguson of course bought him for Doncaster when uh, the boy wanted to play in League One so and Doncaster had just got promoted to Darren so um, that was a standout performance at home in a cup it was 3-0 it could have been 7 or 8 now that's 
That's not disparaging on Doncaster because they are a terrific side. I've said there, as we sit today, if we go forward, I think they've got a real chance of making the making the playoffs. A real chance. Um, so I think that was a a very accomplished performance. I think your home performances against Sunderland twice were very good. Well, I think a performance that that sticks in my mind that was very very good, but. We drew the game and didn't get the credit for it. It was away at Portman Road when we went to Ipswich. Ipswich came into Gillingham and beat us, beat us 2-1, but, but beat us fairly comfortable, I think. Was it 2-1, 1-0? 1-0, yeah. Um, well, the boys scored at the far post, but it was, it was yeah, it was um, it was a fairly comfortable one if you're Paul Lambert. I, I think they probably expected, because of the one or two comments that were made after that game and it carried into the Boxing Day fixture, I, I think the Ipswich fans are not thinking this is going to be five or six. It's, uh, I know we played exceptionally well. And I, I think the only disappointing thing we didn't leave Portland Road that day, we had three or no victory with the performance. Deserved that for sure. Um, so there's a, number of, there's a number of performances over the season. You're talking about character, black pull away. You know, we're, we're not in the game. We get ourselves in front. We concede in the 91st minute or whatever near to it. And we win it in the 95th minute. That, that's character. Sunderland at home, corners, throwing control and finish, character, Brandon in the in the extra time in the cup game or something. These are characters. But um yeah, not a number of really good performances, but Doncaster at home in the cup was, was and the league game. Oh <laughs> very good wins. How important would you say the cup run, the FA Cup run was? Because I mean I remember playing away at Sunderland in the first round, there's hardly anyone there. We were one 0 down at half time and it felt like it might fizzle out a little bit. We come out second half, we get the goal. And from then on, it, it felt like to me that our season really built from that moment on, from that game. Would you go along with that? Yeah, I think that's a fair I think that's a fair summary. I think we spent a lot of time after that match talking to the players in the dressing room about standards and, and what they could individually and collectively achieve. Um, listen, you cannot fail. You cannot fail to have a buzz when you turn up at the stadium allowed to play football. Hmm. And my, and my t- team talk at half-time was, I cannot believe we've come to a Premier League stadium. Yeah, there's, there's hardly any supporters here today, given normal circumstances of 35,000, 40,000. But what a place it is to play. And I think in that second half, we did play. And we were well worthy of, of bringing them back to Peacefield. Uh Looking ahead, if we were sitting here this time next season... Where do you think Gillingham could be? I know it's all up in the air at the moment with obviously coronavirus, but where, if it comes comes back to some kind of normality, where would we be? Where do you think we could be? Well, uh, the, the first thing we all hope is we're back playing football in a safe environment for supporters. Football is all about supporters. Um, I get very passionate for whatever team I manage, as you know, whether it's Horse going to Gillingham, whether it's Crawley back in the day going to Gillingham or Rotherham. Um, I get very passionate for the team that pay my wages and, and, and look after my bills and stuff like so. Um, where could we be? We could be where the recruitment will take us. Once again, we'll be in the bottom end of the budget. I'm not saying we'll be bottom. The chairman is still working on some things now. Um, but we've already demonstrated, and I think others have demonstrated in recent times, Sheffield United last season under my mate, Chrissy Wilder. Mm. They didn't anywhere near the top budget in the championship, I can assure you. More like 14th or 15th. And they turned that on its head. Um, and I think all by a couple of results, we'd have been turning this one on its head from being bottom. And there's three or four games I don't wish to remember for for reasons that I know, but I don't wish to look look too deeply at now they've gone. Uh, or we'd be there. So I, I would say if we stay in it and we get our recruitment right, we'll certainly compete for the playoffs for sure. If you had to pick uh, a player, with the, maybe a surprise player, a player that's maybe when you signed them, they didn't think they'd have quite the impact they would have or someone that's impressed you more than perhaps you thought they might, who, who would you go for for that? If you had to pick a someone that's kind of go, gone above and beyond perhaps? I think there's a number of players. I think both the young players from Southampton, you know, Alfie Jones and Tom O'Connor have been, have been outstanding for us, you know, to get, to get, I know Alfie had a few games up at St Mirren in Scotland, but to, to get plucked really from the under-23 team, especially Tommy, at, at Southampton and common play for us, I've, I've done magnificently well. Um, the captains had a really good season. I think the one that would stick in my mind is to, not that it surprised me, but it was such a difficult man to follow. How do you form a, 
how do you follow Thomas Holly at Dillingham? Mm. For me, standout goalkeeper in League One last the season before, last season. Mm. Uh, that was from playing against Gillingham and, and watching Thomas develop as a young man from the previous year as well. I think he was brought to the club by an old goalkeeping coach of mine, Ian Pledger. And, um, and I can remember when he enjoyed me at Mansfield, he spoke so highly about Thomas Holly. When you go and look at League One, you see it. When Thomas had it clear that he had the opportunity to join such a distinguished club as Ipswich Town, then you, it's a, it's a real hard task to fill that shot. And if, if people forget about Thomas Holly, that's the task. Um, done that. And um, so delighted, delighted for them. Both Jacks. Jack Tucker has stepped up from that first ever pre season second half performance. I think he played in the second half and he's got him. And um, it was outstanding. And I said to Paul Rain, I know that kid can play in the Premier League in time. You're not ready for that yet now, um, but in time. But he, he can certainly play in the Championship tomorrow. And in terms of the loanees, obviously it's a build up in the air. Would you hope that potentially we might see one of them back at Priestfield again at some point? I don't know where. Where do we stand on the loanees? Well, the loanees is you don't return to the clubs. Mm. They're back. If the season continues, the, the Football League is making dispensation and rules to allow the the games to continue. And mm-hmm. if that's the case, our chairman and myself, are, and other chairmen with their players, not just Jelling and Football Club, are, are hopeful that with dispensation we can have the bulk of those loan players back. The problem might be Oli Lee because he's called an international loan transfer because it's breaking the borders of Scotland to England. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we'd be hopeful. But, you know, listen, they're, they guys come back, they'll, they'll play a part. If we don't, we'll get on with what we've got. We're, I've said we, we want to play football, we want to get back and play football. It's what we do. Um, our chairman will make the decision. He's, he's looking at finance again tomorrow. Maybe a bank holiday for some, but well, bank holiday for all, it, but all of um, are the bulk of us, or by the, the normal, the, the key workers, NHS carers, and delivery men, and drivers, and people that work in the shop are incredible, especially the frontline staff of this virus. Are incredible. But our chairman's in the office tomorrow. He's going to look at some numbers. Um, he educated me yesterday. I think they have possibly four or five days um, to look at the paperwork that the Football League have sent and make the decision. So I don't actually think um, there'll be a decision on whether we're restarting, just a decision on whether we're restarting or whether we're going to conclude the season and run with the playoffs and the automatic team could up until possibly next weekend. That's, that's what he's telling me yesterday, which... One of the points that did surprise me because I thought it would be both Tuesday, not Tuesday night, Wednesday, but he's telling me it could be the weekend before there's a firm decision from the EFL. That's great, Steve. And one final one. If you had a final message to the Jules fans at home watching this, thinking, oh, I mean, maybe not feeling quite, quite themselves, getting quite down about the virus, what would your message be to them to, to stay positive about football coming back? Yeah, I can't, I can't sit here and talk to the Gillingham fans and, says, and say there's not been days, Henry, in this lockdown that I've not been down. Um, and I go on my little ride on track there and walk about and run about and cut the grass and do the stuff. But there's, there is days that gets you that way, but you um, just stay strong, um, stay safe. It's massively important. We're, we're, we're a long way through the peak of this virus now. We're a long way to the Prime Minister, hopefully in the next few days, easing lockdown even more, the, the, the point of we can get to nearer some normality. I don't know if we'll ever go back to, to where we are, um, but stay safe, stay strong. And there's a there's there's a couple of cases this week where we've got a young a Joe's family. A, a baby just passed away, and it's, it's, it's so sad. As you know, our chairman's Pete Hummy on the on the website, and there's another young lad as well, who's young Jake, who's just had a brain tumor removed, and all of he's on his way to recovery now. And all our thoughts are with Jake and his family. All our players, I. Messi's daughter of players and spoke to some of the players this morning to send some videos to that young man. So, so to, to everyone in Gillingham, we, we hope you're safe. We're desperate for, for football to come back. Um, initially, if it's without supporters, it, if I'm being honest, it won't feel the same. The result will be the same. You'll win, you'll draw, you'll lose. But um, yeah, the, the people of Gillingham have been nothing to Henry. are fantastic to me. They're very, very passionate at the football club. And I look at the I look at the big atmospheres when we played Sunderland, when we played Doncaster in that cup tie, 
when we played West Ham, you know, when we when we played, you know, the bigger clubs that, you know, the Portsmouths and the Peterboroughs and, and games like that, they've been, it, you just realise how important that Brina Mendes and, and the Gillingham supporters, they're, they're great people. I don't need to tell them when they're great, when they're not. You know, I think they've, they've just been outstanding to me, outstanding to my family when my family don't come to a lot of games, never have. Not at Ellen Road, not at London Road, and and, and not at Priestfield, but they'll they'll come on occasion. Um, but it was really interesting. My family obviously came to the West Ham United game, and um, and my family were gobsmacked with the atmosphere, with the noise levels. In fact, David Moyes, is, as you know, is a childhood friend and growing up, always been in touch with each other. And we had a, a beer in the office afterwards, and he and he said, "What was the atmosphere here tonight?" and um, and that's what we want to have on a semi or regular basis at, at Priestfield because I think Gillingham Football Club deserves it. You know, when you look around the Championship, there's some clubs in the Championship or who can go into the Championship that would have what we've got. So um, stay safe, um, as, the, as the Prime Minister say. Stay alert, although I think he's got a few problems today. And one or two uh, people behind him not staying alert. Um, just stay safe and be and be ready for when football comes back in on behalf of the players, the players are well. I've spoken to them all on a different Zoom time calls, checking how mentally they are. They're frustrated, the young men, they're full of vigour, they want to play. Um, but at the same time, they they understand that football will take the decisions at senior level that go away above me. I discussed this with our chairman yesterday. As soon as we know of a decision on what way the season's going, Continuing with playoffs and automatics happening, or we go back and we start off with Fleetwood at home because that's where we were due to play next. Um, then we'll let them know if it goes back to football. Um, we beat Fleetwood, we could be five points off the playoffs with eight games to go, and no one's mentioned Gillingham. No one has mentioned Gillingham. Not many people mentioned Rotherham United or Crawley Town when they both went back to back. So, where there's, where there's a will, there's a way. Where there's the supporters, there's some unique backing, and we've got both. And um, just stay safe, and uh, God bless.